beautiful. So for the guys out there that are watching this in video land, welcome aboard. Wednesday afternoon, Network Educa Educating Bites Business Support Program. Today, we're lucky enough to have Derek Rogers from the Thrive Movement with us, talking about mental health and resilience. Derek, the floor is yours, sir. Thank you, Jay. And thank you, everybody, for watching this wherever you are in the world. And uh, yeah, hopefully, you can get something out of this today to um, report people that you care about uh, in your work, family, uh, or community. So thank you. Uh, screen has been disabled. Oops. Didn't I give you, we didn't, know, we didn't even check it. There you go, mate. All right, we'll start again. There you go. All right, let's, that's better. Cool. All right, so a little bit about me. So as Jay said, I'm from the Thrive Movement Australia. Uh, and we empower people and organisations to thrive in today's world where some people feel like they're doing the opposite and just surviving. Um, how do I do this? Uh, and the why is because I want to support people. How is via consulting, training and coaching programs? So a little bit about me. Um, and also I'm a mental health first aid instructor. So today, uh, why we're here today, so let's have a, an intro of mental health awareness. Uh, I want to build your resilience in these challenging times. And wow, have there been challenging times for any of us that have lived on the east coast of Australia. Um, as you've probably heard these figures before, uh, one in five Australians, um, say so 16 to 25, will experience a mental illness in any one year. And that's 50% half in a lifetime. And I think that's getting well over at the moment. Uh, one of the most common mental illnesses that people experience while well, they're in the depressive orders. So I've suffered from depression myself, uh, a whole range of anxiety disorders, and then they often lead to substance use disorders. So there can be combinations of all three there happening in any order. So let's look at the resilience. How can we avoid this? Or how can we support someone or ourselves um, to be more resilient in these challenging times? So the Oxford Dictionary talks about the capacity to recover quickly from difficulty. All right, so my story. So me, um, how does this fit in with me and my life? So I've always been a sporty person, a healthy person. In fact, I was so passionate about sport and health and teams and connecting and belonging that I became a PE and health teacher. And then I saw in schools, they had a lot for student wellbeing, but there wasn't much for staff wellbeing. And so I left, but what I did is I left a team and a tribe to then work at home by myself. And so straight away, I didn't realize it at the time, but then I went downhill. And so I ended up becoming depressed because one of the things that we must not do is disconnect from our tribe. And that's what I did. The people I connected with and loved, and, and I'm an extrovert. I'm a team person. I just did the opposite. I worked from home. I was passionate, but I didn't know how to set myself up for success. And I went down into depression. I got so bad, that I ended up wanting to take my own life. I thought, man, I've got to do something about this. So then I realized that I had to quickly do the opposite of what I've done. And I reached out and I started connecting with people. And I started to get healthier again. I connected to my purpose, my passion, and that helped me thriving. So that's why I'm here today. That's me. I like being down the beach. Um, that's my two place. And so uh, my wife and I, no coincidence that we've moved here to the Sunshine Coast. Before that, I was on the Bellarine Peninsula. I've always lived near the water, drawn to the water. Uh, and I think, is it 5% of or 95% of Australia's population live within 5 or 10 k's of the water? So, I'm not the only one. All right, so why, why are we here? What's, what's the big deal? Well, of course, bushfires, um, COVID-19 and floods have just been smashing people's emotional and mental well-being um, over the last couple of years up the East Coast of Australia. Um, you would have to have um, be very resilient not to be impacted by that. But the latest stats, um, unfortunately, back from June last year from the ABS tell us that uh, back in June, one in five Australians experienced high to very high levels of psychological distress. Uh, not good. One in three, so it's higher for our younger people. 
Um, and those people in Victoria, no coincidence with all the lockdowns they had, um, were even higher than the Australian average. It doesn't matter whether you're old or young, male or female, we've all been impacted. How does this affect our brain? So we've got our frontal lobe, our prefrontal cortex area here. This is where we want to be. Why? Because it helps us regulate our emotions. And we want to stay in this frontal lobe because this is where we do our best thinking. We process, it's called our executive brain. We're more rational, we're more calm, we're considered, we're kind, we're compassionate, we're empathetic to people. That's known as our rest and digest state and also where our body repairs and heals. But this is where we want to be, but have we been there? No. A lot of people have been hijacked by this little thing called our amygdala in the middle. It's like a gatekeeper and we have very quickly gone from our executive front of our brain back into our survival brain, you may have heard it called. Uh, and here we're the opposite. We're irrational, we're impatient, we lack empathy, uh, can't think straight, memory decreases. And in the workplace, we make mistakes. Here's the big red flag if you're an employer, if you're a boss. We become careless, we become angry. So here's the opposite. You can see you cannot be compassionate and kind and be angry at the same time. Our brain goes one or the other. Yeah? And if you're stuck in angry, you're not going to be thinking straight. Yeah. In fact, it's where our digestion, our immune system stops. So now it's going to impact our physical health. So what can we do about it? All right, hang on. I'll, I'll just stop. There's a lot going on there. Any questions? All right, can you just give me a nod if it's making sense or give me a thumbs up? Yeah, all good. Yeah, beautiful. All right, let's keep All going. making sense. Thank you. All right, so when we see people not being themselves, we've talked about the iceberg effect. Uh, you know the iceberg where 90% of the icebergs under the water. The behaviours we see in people, they're just the tip of the iceberg. Are people a bit off? What's going on? Yeah. So what we're hearing, well, man, what are you, that's, what are you on about? You know, what are we seeing in their behaviour? Maybe it's their dress. Maybe they're just um, looking untidy, drinking more, smoking more, um, gambling more. What are we seeing? And, of course, it'll all be about what we are not reading. Remember, body language is most of our communication, our nonverbal. We don't listen. We think we're hearing, but we're actually not listening. We listen to that tone. So it's just being curious. I say when people, they go, what the F's wrong with that guy? Why don't you F and up? They go, well, hang on. Come from curiosity, come from compassion. And just ask yourself, this is out of character for this person, or well, might be down the street and you see somebody that's totally um, acting inappropriately for the situation in society where they are. Um, you ask yourself, well, what's going on underneath for them? You know, what might be going on for them in their life at the moment that having them react like that? And if you've been impacted by the floods in the last few months, you've been impacted by COVID at all, um, or bushfires in the last two years, um, there's a good chance that this has impacted you and you might not even be aware of it. Or your friends, your colleagues, your family, uh, and you'll see these behaviours and just go, whoa, there's something not going on. Not right. All right. Does that make sense? Yep. Cool. So for me, it's, um, it's how do we become more resilient? How can we reduce the impact of uh, these life's challenges? Um, and someone said to me, you know, we've probably all thought about over the last couple of years, oh, Christmas time, COVID, oh, I can't wait from 20, who thought 21 was going to be a great year? No problems. <laughs> yeah. And then 21 happened. And then, oh, 22, no problems again, you know. And then we, so our problem's going to go away. No, we're all going to have, always going to have problems. What we've got to learn to do is raise the bar and be bigger than our problems. So looking at um, resilience tools and mindsets. I've studied 
um, some of the best people on the planet. Um, the latest Western wellbeing science, together with the Eastern wisdom and philosophy. So I'll put together three pillars. So for me, the number one thing is we've got to reframe our mindset, our thinking. I'm talking about, are you optimistic or pessimistic? Where's my glass um, half full people in the room? Yep. Yeah. And where's my glass half empty people in the room? Yeah, it happens. Yeah. We're going to go growth versus fixed mindset. You know, um, some people it's black and white. That's the way it is. That's the way it is. No, there's no, there's no other option. It's just that's how it is. Um, this happens for people on the autism spectrum, very fixed in their mindset. Um, and it can cause problems when things don't go their way. The simplest things we can do is to practice gratitude, very powerful. So the, um, uh, one of the things I'm gonna talk about uh, a bit later and show an example of how gratitude can help. Empathy and attitude, and then mindfulness. Uh, I ran a workshop last Wednesday about the power and the impact of just being fully present right here, right now. Because when we are, stress and anxiety is not normally here, right here, right now. We can be concerned and have these worries that are impacting and raising our anxiety about things coming up. And then we get anxiety from stuff that we didn't do yesterday. But normally right here, right now, and now there's right now, and now there's right now, we don't have problems. I'll give you an example. Who's had a thought already outside of the room while we've been here the last five minutes? We do. That's our wandering mind. We're going to catch that wandering mind and just practice being back in the present. You want to double your performance? You halve your stress? Practice being in the moment. Yeah. So reframing our mind, very important. Is it easy to do? No, it takes practice. The next thing we need to do is reset our body to sleep. I think we could all could do with better sleep. Breath work helps reset our system. Diet, we know, not rocket science. For years, we've talked about the need for a better diet. And meditation now, the Western science is proving that the ancients have known for thousands of years that meditation is good for us. And then the old thing about laughter. And thirdly, the third pillar is reconnecting. Reconnecting to what? Reconnecting to those things that have brought you joy. I know for me, when I got depression, I stopped doing the things that brought me joy. Not only did I stop connecting with people, passion, but I stopped playing my sports. I stopped catching up with the people I used to go out with, the mates, because I thought I'd better work on my business in this new dream. What I didn't realize, I was smashing my well-being at the same time. And so very important that we just, every day, I say to people, oh, there's nothing good. And I go, what's one thing, one little thing you can do that used to bring you joy that maybe you could do now that's within your control. The joy, purpose. A lot has been written now about purpose and meaning. I believe that our purpose in life is to find our purpose in life, live it, and then give it away, share it. So, yeah. So you can connect to those activities and also connection to the things you love. All right. Does that make sense? Can I have a show of hands that sort of get that? Yeah. Any questions so far? Cool. All right. So our mental health known about it's called it's on a continuum you know life has its ups and downs i think we've all heard that before and that's why mental health is never static but one end we have what is known as languishing where one percent of the population normally are experiencing acute mental illnesses so that's bipolar schizophrenia psychosis and suicidal ideation so that's ideas about taking their own life that's so normally normally about less than 1% of the population. Then we've got 14% of the population, I think that's triple or quadrupled over the last year or two, live with anxiety, depression, chronic overwhelm and stress and poor sleep, all of these things impacting together along with our mindset of low self-care, low self-worth and apathy. 
Then we've got most people are in the middle. They sort of seesaw between various states of emotional wellness and resilience. It could be today, oh, it's a sunny day today. I'm, I'm feeling up today. And then tomorrow it's a rainy day, I'm feeling down. And depending on how my boss, how my partner reacts to me, and so these are very reactive ways. And that's why people seesaw up and down. Then at the other end, we've got the resilient and thriving people of our population. Now, if you've done the maths, you can realise that that's only about 15%. What's different about the 15% of the people in the population that have good resilience and have sound mental health? Well, they've got sound strategies, yeah, to look after themselves and habits. Do we all have habits? Absolutely. The wisdom is knowing what habits serve us well and what habits don't serve us well. And then probably having the courage to do something about it. 15% of the population have looked at their habits and fine-tuned them. What are working, what's not working, and change it. And then the attitude that we've talked about, that healthy, positive attitude, that can-do attitude. And relationships, wow, relationships are so important. But of course, what's the biggest and the most important relationship? That's it, the relationship with yourself. Yeah. So all of those factors help 15% of the population a sustainable, resilient, and thriving life. Any questions? Any comments? No. Cool. All right. So today is just we're giving you the awareness of mental health, how it fits into our society. What's happening, the numbers, and then obviously some things we can do about it. Let's look at reframing. One of the simplest things that worry. I remember a Buddhist monk being interviewed and he said, aren't you worried about the uprising over there in Tibet? And he said, no. But aren't you worried about over in England, the monks are protesting? No. What about in America? Aren't you worried about it? And he said, I don't worry. And he goes, but you must be worrying. No, I don't worry. They're trained not to worry because I know that worrying is a useless, self-destructive emotion. But instead, I want you to have concerns. And then ask yourself, are they inside or outside of your control? If they're outside, well, then make a powerful decision to let them go. So what's happening in the world a lot we see on TV, we can't do anything about it. What's happening, the government's decisions, we don't like them, but we can't do much about them. However, if they're inside control, then we really need to take ask yourself, is this worth it? You know, you've heard the expression, uh, choose your battles. This is where this comes from. And then if it's no, then make a powerful decision and let it go. So that's a big one. What's in control and what's outside of my control? Where should my thoughts be? And the answer is within your control. Okay. So the other one, mindfulness, we've talked about. But that's it right here, right now. And normally no problems. Now, stress and anxiety washes away. Powerful ways of being. Why? Because most of us miss out on our life because we're actually not present to it. I remember when my martial arts master told me this about 10, 15 years ago. I went, what the heck? I had to go away and think about it. And then I went, she's right. So it's just being present, being present. When they did the global happiness surveys, they always say the people who are the happiest enjoying their life the moment at the most are the people who are in the moment, doing whatever they love doing, hanging out with whatever the people they love hanging out with. And the people who had the, were the less happiest, they had the biggest worries, were the people who were always worrying about, oh, tomorrow I've got to do this. Oh, shit, yesterday I've got to do that. Not present. So just catch yourself. Catch yourself and catch yourself. Don't beat yourself up. Who's our biggest critic? Our inner critic. Yeah, so we don't need other people to beat us, beat us up. We do it ourselves, yeah. Be kind to yourself. And that, that wandering mind, all right. So let's move on. Gratitude, so I talked about gratitude before. So there's a, a resilience project, a couple of uh, footy players from Melbourne started off the resilience project, going in schools, going gangbusters. And they're basically just teaching people gratitude. Well, compassion as well, compassion and gratitude. So that's what the, the research has shown the guys resilient project to. So I, I, you practice gratitude? I know I do. First thing in the morning, last thing at night. Five things to be grateful for today. What's the best thing about today? 
one thing I learned today, and one thing I could be better at. Simple, powerful, makes a difference. Intentional breathing. So we go from our flight or fright response in the back of our brain, to our frontal lobe we talked about before. We want to get there. But how do we get ourselves out of there? Deep breaths. Deep breaths. Used by not just me, the US Navy SEAL. How to get calm and quick straight away. Fire brigade, CEO. What do they do? Box breathing. In for four, hold for four, out for four, hold for four. Yeah. If you do that for 15 minutes, you will start to let go of deep emotions and your stuff will come up, yeah? Stuff like grief, powerful. Gets us out of our sympathetic nervous system, our fight or flight, back into our parasympathetic nervous system where we wanna be quickly and easily. And also have a drink of water. All right. Let me go through these quickly, Jason. I know we've already have passed. But resetting yourself sleep. Talked about sleep before. Um, could anybody else do with better sleep? Yeah. Professor, Ma Professor Matthew Walker, one of the uh, world's leading sleep um, neuroscientists, uh, his research has shown that if anybody's having less than six hours sleep a night, it's doing you harm and permanent harm. So, uh, yeah, some people need seven, eight. I need nine a lot of the time. And of course, that sleep, yeah, it resets us. It restores us and heals us. So basically, sleep hygiene, what does it look like? Avoiding caffeine, caffeine and alcohol. Regular sleep times. Cool your room. Exercise enough to be tired. Meditate, listen to meditation. The sleep story, remember, not only does our body need a rest, but our mind needs a rest. Resetting your diet. All right. Most people be aware that our food impacts not only our physical shape, but also our energy and our mindset. Yeah. So use the food to feed your mind and then it'll also feed your body. Um, yes, you're going to have takeaway food, but mostly I talk about low HI foods, low human interfered with foods. Fresh fruit and veg, yep, still the best for us. And get creative. A lot of people are being uh, recipe swapping over COVID. Great to see. Uh, working with the kids. Minimise those foods that are survival. Our brain hunts for fats, sugars, and salts in survival mode. We're just going to be smart and give it good fats, good sugars, and good salt. Yeah. And laughter. Yes, laughter is still the best medicine. Yeah. So what activities could you do that bring you joy? Yeah. All right, this kid was just tickled by his dad, and that's what happened. Well, maybe. Yeah. Watch comedies. Laughing yoga. Who's heard of laughing yoga? Never. Yeah, yeah such a thing. And it works. I attended one. I thought, like, come on. And I was laughing my head off. So it does work. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, uh, with your kids, you can do messenger stuff um, and make silly, funny shapes and, and faces. So lots of fun ideas. So what's one thing you can do that gives you a bit of laugh uh, on your day? Powerful medicine. The other thing, of course, is reconnecting to our purpose of meaning and joy. Uh, so I'm a health and well-being provider for these fellas. And uh, recently when we retired, we know that if you don't have a, a purpose and a passion, uh, the research shows that you'll go downhill very quickly. So these guys love their music. They love connecting. So it's called Shedding the Blues. A combination of men's shed, blues music, or in this case, banjo music, and meaning and joy. Uh, what networks you know that could support you or your friends or your colleagues. Um, maybe it's someone in the community. So those healthy relationships. Start with yourself and then work with others. So yeah, these guys playing the banjo. Not for me, but you know, for some people employ, play, enjoy playing the piano and the banjo. Um, now here's these old three fellows here. Recognize anyone? You probably don't because these guys are from Sardinia. This is where the oldest men in the world live, according to the Blue Zones. Who's heard of the Blue Zones? Yeah, they looked at where 
uh, so centenarians live. And this has the highest clusters of men over 100 on the planet in Sardinia. So you know, below uh, France and next to Italy, Ireland, and then you've got Portugal. And Sardinia, yeah, they live over 100. So what's the number one for longevity and happiness? It's not diet, it's not exercise. It's actually this thing called social interconnectedness, catching up like we're doing this morning, getting together, connecting with your mates, having a laugh, doing the things that you enjoy, whether it's under the bonnet, in the garden, down the beach, wherever it is for you, barbecues, whatever. We've seen with COVID, it's a basic human need to belong and connect with even the introverted people that are happy at home. When they first said, you can work from home, they went, woohoo. You know? And three to six months later, they're going, I'm feeling flat. I don't know why. Because we all have in our DNA basic programming that's been around for a million years of connecting and belonging. So when the government said to stay apart, to stay safe, we went, hang on, that doesn't sound right. But then we were conditioned. And then you had the opposite where people were experiencing anxiety, connecting in groups again, particularly in uh, Melbourne and Sydney. Um, so I know a lot of people have been um, videoing their family over the last couple of years because I can't visit them. So that's obvious. Talking about it. Uh, women are better than blokes. Blokes, we need to get better at talking about things. And the opposite we can do to talking is listening. Not pretending to listen, just practicing deep listening to connect, to understand. Yeah. Uh, and then understand the difference between lonely and alone. This is something I had to learn the hard way. Being an extrovert, I always liked to be with people and I didn't like to be alone. But then I realized I learned that I needed to be have alone time and then for too much alone time turn into loneliness. So there's a distinction there. We've got to learn that. All right, so finishing off, reconnecting yourself to other to things. Um, so I put out this self-care guide. Why? Because it's huge need at the moment in our society, particularly up the East Coast of Australia, for people to look after them self-care better. So I say self-care is not selfish. It's self-honouring, yeah? And I firmly believe it's a consistent key uh, for that, or that missing key to sustainable performance, yeah? So I made one that covers the five domains of health, uh, physical, social, emotional, um, spiritual, and mental, and then add the sixth one in there, support. So really important. What could you do or your friend or a colleague do that you could help them with, guide them to maybe? to help them look after their self-care a bit better. Um, what about you? Here's this guy here in his 80s. He's still doing push-ups. I'll still be doing push-ups till, till I'm 100. So what have you seen today? Oh, before we do that, let's, let's just stop. I'll, I'll stop and give you a chance. Anybody want to give me some comments, some feedback? How's this been landing? I think a lot of it's common sense, Derek, but we don't realise that. Yeah. You know, it, it, it takes somebody with the experience and the knowledge to come in and say, you've got to do this. It's, it's like dieting. You know, I'm overweight. I know what I've got to do. But I uh, yeah. and, and like I said, what, you, what you're saying there, it, it, it does all make perfect sense. And, and yeah, we've heard it all before, but it, it, it's something that needs to be instilled into us, especially as business owners. Um, as business owners, you forget about yourself. You always do. Yeah. The last person that you think of, you think about your staff, you think about your customers, and then it's family time. So you think about your family. You're the last person that you actually think of. Yeah, and and, and, and true. And um, but if you know, it's like putting uh, if we don't get our car serviced, yep. uh, it's going to break down on the side of the road. And if we don't look after ourselves with self care, it's not like servicing. We're going to break down. So. Um, well, yeah, we're, we're going to get a little bit smarter about that. I mean, obviously, the first thing is self-awareness. So, yes, you, you know that uh, your, your body's not in the shape you want to be or your mind's not in the place it want to be. So first step is, is self-awareness. And then, you know, what is this costing me? Um, and then what can I do about it? And then um, maybe do I need someone to help me accountable or, or somebody who can guide me with their expertise? So, yeah. Thank you, Jace. No worries. All right. Anybody else? Cool. So just summarising, um, 
I'm always, um, I do my training through a coaching lens. So it's just inquiry based and then um, goal or action required. Um, I've been to hundreds, probably thousands of trainings over the years. You probably have too, where you go and that's all oh, great. Well, be, that's awesome. Get all pumped up and then you go back to work the next day and you don't get a chance to implement it. And by the end of the week, you've totally forgotten all about it. So I'm not here to make you feel good or feel bad. I'm just here to impress you and impress you by press, impressing upon you, I should say. Um, you know, there's the things that we can all do, little changes. So is it reframing your mindset uh, or your friends, your colleagues, family member? What can you see that can make a difference that you could support them and work them with? Um, up, being more optimistic, um, helping them with their, their growth, their gr practicing gratitude together, empathy, uh, that positive attitude or maybe doing some mindfulness exercises together. Would that make a difference? Or do you think it's more, no, Derek, I think the body, yeah, I definitely need to do more sleep. Yes, I need to do more exercise, practice my breath, diet, or laugh more. I think um, particularly over COVID, um, I think watching a comedy was almost um, you know, compulsory for looking after our mental health because the, watching on the news was so depressing. Or is it reconnecting now that we can get out and about? Uh, what are those activities that you've loved doing that you've off, couldn't do? Um, you know, what are the things that bring you meaning, a sense of purpose, joy and connection? So have a think. Um, how can you support your family, friends, your colleagues with any of these? Um, and then there's probably something you take away for yourself. So give yourself a challenge, give yourself a goal. Um, find a buddy. Who's gonna, who can you support or who can support you to be able to move forward and get the results that you want, they want. So we can all um, experience more thriving and less surviving. Um, yeah, that's me, thank you. Beautiful, thank you. Here's my links, found some free stuff down the bottom. Um, jump on there if you want to know more there's a link to book a time um, I can put that also in the chat as well or is that high in here do you think so? Beautiful thank you very much Derek